Hey guys, what's up? Ty Ty the Gamer Guy here, and welcome to Top 10 Generation 8 Pokemon. I was pleased with how my first countdown video turned out, and I'm here to deliver once again. Now, you might be wondering why I'm jumping straight into Generation 8 and skipping the rest. I was going to do Generation 2's video, but with it being the current generation and with all of the DLC being available right now, I think it's safe to say that Sword and Shield's time in the spotlight will be coming to a close by sometime next year, as bumpy as the road was up to release. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the sole thing that everybody looks forward to to each new game, the new Pokémon. It's pretty crazy how much I changed this list over time, but I'm finally comfortable with it and ready to make this video. As always, before we start, I have a few disclaimers. These are entirely my opinions. I am not trying to say that my choices are objectively the best, nor the best for competitive battling. I just have to like it. I am also not including Galarian forms. Galarian evolutions, however, are fair game. With that out of the way, let's begin! Kicking off the list, we had the fruit roll up with Endeavor's facial hair, Scorch. Among Gen 8's swarm of bug types, it was the only one to escape the net. I always thought centipedes were pretty cool looking and they took the coolness and amped it up tenfold. Its battle pose especially did wonders for me, almost like a snake giving it a much more intimidating look. Although I do think its shiny could have looked a lot better though. Scorch excels at being a physical attacker with respectable bulk. It's actually bulkier than I remembered. And it can boost those numbers even further with Coil and heal with the now actually good Leech Life, which gave Bug Types a much needed recovery move in Gen 7. But it's Fire Bug, so what about Stealth Rocks, you may ask? No need to worry about that either. Just slap on some heavy duty boots and it's all set to go. Seriously, this item has made so much more Pokemon's lives easier in the metagame. came just in time for dessert, although I'm personally more of a pumpkin pie guy. A grass dragon was something I've wanted for a long time. I know Mega Sceptile exists, but it's a Mega Evolution rather than a standalone Pokemon. Either way, I'm happy to see the type combination make a return. I've seen a lot of people throw shade on the Applin family for being a dragon type when it's just a worm, when that is far from the truth. It's not a worm, but rather a worm. A serpentine dragon. So it's a worm and an apple. Or caramel apple if it's gigantamaxed. Appleton was a Pokemon I was pretty indifferent about upon seeing it for the first time, but it really grew on me. So much so that I reserved a spot for it on my team in my first journey through the Galar region. It's kind of funny that out of all the other dragons in Galar, I chose the fat one. Thick. You can imagine my surprise when I found out that its floppy ears are actually its eyes. And that dummy thickness isn't just for show either. As it has some nice bulk, and a signature move of Apple Acid is fantastic for not only doing solid damage, but also softening up your opponent with 100% chance special defense drops. That times 4 weakness to ice certainly hurts, but with thick fat, it has no problem standing out in the cold. Want to fatten your Appleton up even more? Give it a berry with Ripen for the ability, and it'll get double the effect from the berry it eats. For restoring most if not all of its HP, or getting an instant plus 2 boost to one of its stats. With access to these, you'll never go hungry with Appleton on your side. No, seriously, those slabs of skin on its back are edible.
three from the Split Decision Ruins in the Crown Tundra is the literal lightning fast Regieleki. I'm not kidding either. This thing has a whopping base 200 speed, officially dethroning Speedform Deoxys for the fastest Pokemon in the series. And it doesn't just have agility going for it either. With a solid base 100 attack and special attack, and its ability of Transistor that boosts its electric moves by 50%, allowing it to fire very strong Thunderbolts or Max Lightnings. You have every right to be wary of this thing if you find yourself fighting one. So with ridiculous speed and strong stab, it had to take a hit somewhere. And that was in its move pool. Regieleki is very limited in what it can do, but it's good at what it does. It can even set up light screen or reflect without much worry. And need I even mention its idle animation? To a degree, it almost looks kinda cute because of its size and how it jumps. Until it extends those electric tentacle thingy-majigs and becomes nightmare fuel! It may not be an ice type, but Regieleki has certainly earned the title for the coolest of the legendary titans for me. Look at this dude! <laughs> Wait till you see the. F <laughs> no, 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 no! <laughs> <laughs> I even say here? It's Mr. Rhyme. Regional variants making a comeback was already cool, but I certainly didn't expect to see regional evolutions. I was so close to picking Obstagoon for the spot, but then I took an Ice Cane to the knee. I don't know what it is with Ice-type regional variants that speak to me so much. Mr. Rhyme is just entertaining to watch. I mean look, it tap dances! Screw Ice Q, this is the Happy Feet Pokemon! So I guess you could say... When Mr. Rhyme takes down an opponent, it's... DANCING ON ITS GRAVE! <laughs> its name of all things is also fun. Of course Rhyme rhymes with mime, but this rhyme in particular is frost formed on cold objects by the rapid freezing of water vapor in a cloud or fog. Gotta love ice puns. As far as battle capabilities go, Mr. Rhyme plays the role of the typical bulky special attacker common among psychic types, as well as having a nice arsenal of special moves to dance around the competition and a great offensive typing to back that up. And need I even mention that it can negate the effects of Light Screen, Reflect, and Aurora Veil just by entering the battle? And that it oddly gets Rapid Spin and even a reliable recovery move in the form of Slack Off? They gave this thing some pretty damn good stuff. Those tap dance lessons for sure paid off. No wonder it's called the Comedy Pokemon. Step aside, Slacking, because we finally have a proper Gorilla Pokémon! I sorta of have this tradition of always picking the Firestarter first when a brand new generation drops, so I may not have picked Grookey for my first journey through Galar, but that didn't stop the beat for this funky monkey to take the crown of my favorite of the trio. Definitely one of the best primate Pokémon in my jungle book. However, there is one thing that bugs me about it a little. You see that drum it whips out in battle? It carries it in its hair. If you ask me, it was a huge missed opportunity for it to carry that drum around its chest. Cause what do drummers do? Beat their drums. And what do gorillas do? Beat their chest. How was this overlooked? Oh well, naturally being a starter and all, Rillaboom was pretty damn solid. But even that feels like an understatement. Rillaboom has very well-rounded stats, even boasting the highest attack stat of all the starters. Not counting Megas, of course. And has a nice bulk to top that off. Fitting for a Gorilla, actually. Its speed is solid as well. But who needs a great speed stat when it has Grassy Glide? On its own, it's a pretty average move, but in grassy terrain, it not only gets a boost in power, but also becomes a priority move. 
this top two with its giant 125 attack and a choice band is going to leave a dent in just about anything it touches. And its coverage is anything but bad either. You turn from momentum, drain punch for healing, or superpower if you just want to absolutely blow back anything that isn't a ghost like a bug flying or fairy type. And do I even have to say anything about knockoff? Is that sword stance I see? Eat your heart out, Tapa Bulu. Starting off the top 5 is if an alternate timeline where Poe and Master Shifu switch roles, Urshifu. The Isle of Armor may have been... okay, but Urshifu was outright amazing. One Pokemon that has two different fighting styles, with slightly varying move pulls, and it's up to you to choose which one you want. The fighting dark type single strike style, or the fighting water type rapid strike style. Personally, Single Strike style is my favorite, but I have to give mad props to both of these forms. Just look at their signature moves. Single Strike pulls a One Punch Man and Rapid Strike goes full. You can tell they had fun animating this thing. I'd say Urshifu even rivals Lucario for being the most anime Pokemon out there. Naturally, being a legendary, Urshifu has great stats. 130 attack along with stab, wicked blow, and surging strikes that always land a critical hit, regardless of the opponent's ability or if Lucky Chan is active. Gen 1 Persian and Bugsy Scyther ain't got nothing on that. I can't really say much else about this thing. It's just such a cool Pokemon that can do cool things and look cool while doing it. But I do have one thing to say. You know, given it's a fighting type and it's based on a bear, and by the odd changes the game gets more DLC or a new game entirely, Urshifu would be the perfect choice for a playable character in Pokémon Tournament. It just makes too much sense. It'd be the first Pokémon from Galar on the roster, and the fact that it's a bear, Tekken has a literal bear as a playable character. I thought this was super obvious and always wondered why one never made a spot on the roster, but now they have the perfect opportunity with the perfect Pokémon. Pokémon strives in its variety of playstyles and occasional gimmicks among its roster, and one character with two distinctive movesets that you can choose from would be so cool to see. Make it happen, Namco! What can I say? I like my reptile monsters, and Dreadnought is no exception. To no one's surprise, being a snapping turtle and all, Dreadnought is rocking quite an impressive attack stat. And it's actually not as slow as you'd think it is. Sure, Blastoise is faster, but if it's raining, that's a completely different story. Sure, it has an unfortunate times 4 weakness to grass, but if it sees the opportunity, no plant will appreciate a strong jaw boosted Ice Fang. Dreadnought doesn't need to worry about biting off more than it can chew, and G-Max Stone Surge is literally an offensive stealth rock. This can really rub some salt in your opponent's wound if you knock out one of their Pokemon with it and set up stealth rocks on the same turn. It may have not been part of my original team, but I didn't hesitate to give it a spin in the next one and I was anything but disappointed. My Dreadnought was taking a bite out of everything she faced and quickly became my favorite Generation 8 Water type, as well as my favorite Generation 8 Rock type, as well as my favorite Turtle Pokemon. I'd like to see Ernie Brown Jr. try to catch this with his bare hands. The fairy type has been around for quite some time now since its introduction in Generation 6, and some really solid and even great Pokémon have spawned from it. But compared to the other pocket monsters they share their home with, they typically end up not ranking very high for me. But things are different now.
Oh my god, she's so cute! Look at her smile and the way she runs! Protect at all costs! <clears throat> I mean, uh, that's cool, I guess. Alright, you caught me. Yes, I adore Alcremy. Hey, don't judge me. I'm no stranger when it comes to cute Pokemon. Ever since she was first revealed, I knew I had to save a spot for her on my team. We've had Pokemon in the past be based on food, but not actually be food. But this time around, Alcremy is literally sentient whipped cream. Honestly, the concept is pretty weird and kind of disturbing. Often making her the butt of dirty jokes on the internet, but I won't let that bother me. And I will protect her from everyone who tries to taint her innocence. And get this, you can customize what you want your Alcremy to look like. It's not very often when you're able to do this with a Pokemon. And there are so many different combinations to pick from. As far as battle capabilities go, she's pretty standard. Pretty slow, but has great special attack and special defense. Making her a prime team member for Trick Room teams. You know, the usual call mindsets to give your opponent their just desserts. But also with access to acid armor, recover, and aromatherapy. But that's not even the icing on the cake. She has a signature move called Decorate which increases both attack and special attack by two stages to whoever she targets. This is a mad dangerous combo if paired with hyper offensive Pokemon that can take out their opponents before they even get a chance to blink. And when Gigantamax, she can even peel both herself and her ally while doing big damage with G-Max Finale. I certainly had high hopes for Alcremy and I'm quite satisfied with the results. So much so that I can call her my favorite fairy type of all time. Pokemon, what are you doing? You're giving me too many super cool poison types that I know what to do with! If you couldn't tell already, I like Toxtricity. A lot. Electric and Poison is a type I've wanted for a while and they kicked off with it fantastically. Toxtricity is just such a cool Pokemon. And there's two of them! Their animations ooze personality and this Gigantamax form uses a literal electric guitar to fight. I could end this segment just on that. But as always, there's more than meets the eye. Like I said before, there are two forms of this toxic lizard, and as nature will determine what form Toxo will evolve into. Extroverted natures become Ant form, while introverted natures will become Low Key form. Both of them are awesome, but Ant is easily my favorite of the two. I like the overall design slightly better, and I've always liked the combination of purple and yellow. Now, the two have very minuscule differences outside animations, the only difference being their move pools slightly differing but it's nothing major that makes one stand out more than the other. So in the end, just pick whichever one you think is the coolest. Honestly, I think Toxtricity is a Pokemon that was introduced a few generations later than it should have. Unova in particular. Hear me out. This is easily the best Pokemon for Roxy to have. She's a poison type specialist, and the leader of her own punk rock band, and low key form even matches her outfit. So what's it doing here so late to the party? If Roxy were to ever return to the series, I will be severely disappointed if she doesn't have one of these. As for battle capabilities, Toxtricity is no slouch at doing damage. Its ability of punk rock will increase the power of sound based moves as well as making it more resistant to said moves if used against it. An overdrive and especially boom burst will surely leave your opponent's ears ringing. However, it isn't particularly fast and at times for weakness to earthquake certainly stings. But oddly, it's able to learn shift gear to help with its mediocre speed and even allow it to hit for decent physical damage with moves like drain punch. This thing definitely deserves all the attention it gets, and it well deserved that second placement among the most popular Generation 8 Pokemon in that poll on Google a few months back. Keep rocking your heart out, my mon! Before we get to number one, I'd like to go over some honorable mentions. Cinderace, Flapple, Grimmsnarl, Obstagoon, Surfetched, Runorigus, Dragapult, and Zamazenta.
taking the throne at number one is the armored flying Ubu driver of Galar, Corva Knight. If you saw my top 10 favorite Kanto Pokemon video, you'd know I'm a pretty big fan of birds. So much so that you can expect to see at least one in top 10s of the other generations in the future. Every generation has a family of bird Pokemon available at the start of each game. And we've got some pretty darn great ones over the years. But Corviknight easily takes the cake among all of them. And not just it either. I have to give fair credit to its pre-evolutions too. Rookadee is adorable. Corva Squire is simple but still really cool. And Corviknight is just so freaking awesome! Just look at it! This could seriously stop anything in a track just by looking at it. You can imagine I caught one of these as soon as I could. It was even the last Pokemon on my team to reach its final stage, which made it even more special. I love my Valkyrie. She was an excellent addition throughout my entire journey through Galar, all the way to becoming champion in the DLC. Out of all the bird Pokemon I've raised over the years, she's definitely my favorite and well deserves the title. And yes, I said she. My Corviknight is a girl, and a pretty one too. A pretty badass one! Alright, I think I've gushed over this avian enough. So let's see what this bird can do on the battlefield. To put things blunt, Corviknight makes for an excellent tanky physical attacker. It may not have as good of defense as its Jotonian cousin of Skarmory, but don't let this steer you away. Besides defense, it also has respectable HP, attack, and special defense. And it can even learn bulk up to make its already bulky body even more bulky, and land some nasty Bray Birds and heal off any damage taken with Roost like any other bird. And did I mention it gets Body Press? A move that's based on the user's defense? Set up a few bulk ups or even iron defense and it'll flatten anything that it can. Want to try lowering its stats? Well, tough luck, because Mirror Armor will just send those stat debuffs right back at you. Trying to set up hazards or screens? Think again, because G-Max Wind Rage will just blow all that away. Corva Knight is just... amazing. For one of the earliest Pokemon to be revealed for Generation 8, it certainly made the wait worth it. The 8th generation certainly has some rocky areas that need polishing, but I think I speak for everyone that there is something special to find among every new roster of Pokemon with every new generation. And this is something that the series always gets right. Congratulations, Corviknight. You soared into my heart with absolutely no contest. And I welcome you with open wings as not only my favorite Generation 8 Pokemon, but also my favorite flying type and steel type. Thanks for making this journey worthwhile. This is Ty Ty the Gamer Guy. And these are my top 10 favorite Generation 8 Pokemon.